Hi, I'm Jim Cook. I'm one of the instructors for eLearn to Sail, and we're going to do some sextant shots. This is our workshop on how to use a sextant, how to take a shot, and how to set up an artificial horizon and take a shot using the artificial horizon. In order to take an accurate sextant shot, you need to have either a true horizon or an artificial horizon. A true horizon is a horizon that you cannot see any land in the direction you are taking the shot. Since this workshop is being held inland and we do not have an ocean or a lake that is big enough to have a true horizon, we're going to use an artificial horizon which we will create using a pan of water. This is for practice only. You would never use an artificial horizon for actual navigational work. If you're in an area that you have a true horizon, you would want to use that true horizon. In this video, we will cover taking a shot using both a true horizon and an artificial horizon. There are two types of sextants available, metal and plastic. Metal sextants are heavier and more expensive, but they're more accurate, keep their settings longer, and they're a lot nicer to look at. A metal sextant will give you accuracy within a mile or so, but this is greatly dependent on the weather. In today's world, with GPS readily and inexpensively available, you'll be using the sextant as an emergency navigational tool only. Unless I was given a metal sextant as a gift, I personally would use a plastic sextant. Plastic sextants are accurate enough to be an emergency navigational tool, typically able to be within four miles of your location. You will need to check the mirror settings every time you use it. Before we start setting up and using the sextant, let's make sure we're all using the same terminology and label the parts of the sextant. We have the frame, the scale, measured in degrees, the telescope, the index arm, the index arm lock, the index arm micrometer used to measure minutes and tenths of a minute, the index mirror, the index mirror filters, horizon mirror, and the horizon mirror filters. The first thing we're going to cover is how to properly pick up a sextant. You always want to reach underneath the sextant and lift it out of the box holding the frame of the sextant. You do not want to lift the sextant using the index arm. We have two sextants here, a Davis 15 and a Davis 25, and I want to show you the difference between those two sextants first. On the Davis 15, the horizon mirror, which is this mirror right here, is made up of 50% glass, which is this side, and 50% mirror, which is this side. This compares to the Davis 25 that has a one-piece horizon mirror. The glass has a coating on it that will both allow the ray of light from the horizon to come through the glass and reflect the ray of light coming from the index mirror. That makes this sextant easier to use, but it also makes it more expensive. Before you get started using the sextant, there are three adjustments that you have to make sure are correct. On a metal sextant, these three corrections will probably remain the same all the time, and you won't have to do any fiddling with them. But on a plastic sextant, you'll probably have to make the corrections every time you pick up the sextant. The first of those corrections is making sure that the index mirror is perpendicular to the frame of the sextant. The thing we want to make sure is that we can see this part of the frame as we look past the index mirror and we can see this part of the frame by looking at the reflection through the index mirror. We need to adjust this screw to get them to form a straight line. This is an image of what you would see as you were looking along the sextant frame. They're out of sync now and I adjust the index screw until they are in sync. The next adjustment we need to make is for the horizon mirror. There are two adjustment screws on the horizon mirror one on the outside and one on the inside of the mirror. To make these adjustments, we set the sextant at zero degrees, zero minutes, 
and we're going to be looking at the sun because you want to pick something that is as far away as possible. First thing you have to do is set the filters properly. You don't want to burn out your eyeball. There's, a, there's absolutely a reason why the old time ship's captains had a patch over one eye. They didn't have the proper filters and they actually burned out their eyeballs. So the first thing you want to do is take the sextant, raise it up, with all the filters in place, you want to drop some filters in and other filters out until you find the combination of filters that gives you the best reading or the best image of the sun. This will take some practice when you're first doing it, but after you've gotten used to doing it, it becomes almost automatic. So I will use these two filters for the horizon mirror and I'll use these two filters for the index mirror. Again, it depends very much on the given day which set of filters you're going to use. Notice that we have a somewhat cloudy day today. Even if there is some cloud cover and there is not a crisp image of the sun, the proper set of filters may pull the image of the sun out of the cloud cover. The point is that if you get a clear image of either the top or the bottom of the sun, you can take the shot. If you're using the bottom of the sun, we call that shooting the lower limb. If you use the top, you are shooting the upper limb. I have the sextant set at zero degrees, zero minutes. I look up at the sun and I can see that there are two suns that are up there. I adjust the outside screw to get the suns to line up vertically and I adjust the inside screw to align the suns so they line up horizontally. To actually take the shot, I start with the index arm set to zero degrees, zero minutes, and with the filters in place, look directly at the sun. Be careful. The filters must be fully in place and you must look directly through the center of the telescope to be sure you do not hurt your eye. Since you should be seeing an image from both the index mirror and the horizon mirror, there should be two images of the celestial body, in this case the sun. The coloring of these images will totally depend on the filters being used at the time. If you have a perfectly calibrated sextant, it will appear as if you are seeing only one image. Try turning the micrometer drum to be sure there is a second image behind the front one. If there are any errors in the sextant settings, you will see that there are two images of the sun up there. This is very typical for a plastic sextant. You point the sextant at the sun, you squeeze the release levers of the index arm, and you follow the sun that is moving down. You follow it down until you get close to the horizon, then you have to move the horizon shades out of the way so you can see both the celestial body and the horizon. You want to adjust the micro drum until you have the lower limb of the celestial body just kissing the horizon. As you're adjusting the micrometer you want to pivot the sextant so that the sun is creating a pendulum action against the horizon. You do this to make sure you've got the correct shot that the, that the sextant is perpendicular to the horizon when you've got it. When you have the spot where the sun is just at, just kissing the horizon, you say mark, and the person who's keeping track of your time writes down the time of the shot. The previous graphics show what the experience would look like with a sextant that has a full horizon mirror. The following graphic will show the experience if your sextant has a split horizon mirror, 50% clear glass and 50% mirror. As with the other sextant, as you start taking the shot, the index arm starts at 0 degrees 0 minutes. And again, if you have a perfectly calibrated sextant, it would look like you were only viewing one image but in most cases you will see that there are two images. As you release the index arm lock and start to move the index arm forward into the arc, you will now have two images of the celestial body. This is where it gets more complicated. It is important to keep the image of the celestial body on the split between the clear glass and the mirror. As you move the index arm further forward, 
you need to follow the image of the celestial body that is moving down towards the horizon. This is the tricky part. The rate you are lowering the sextant and the rate you are moving the index arm forward need to be synchronized so that you keep the image of the sun in the view of the telescope. After you get close to level with the sextant, release the index arm lock and use that hand to reach forward and lower the shades on the horizon mirror so that you can see the horizon. Now that you can see the horizon, arc the sextant back and forth to get the pendulum motion shown using the micrometer drum to adjust the index arm so you get the limb of the celestial body just touching the horizon. Now that you've learned how to do one shot, you're going to have to do nine more. You need to take ten shots and then plot them on a piece of graph paper with time versus height of sextant. That takes care of the fact that you might be taking a shot while you're in a trough or on a crest or the, the celestial body may be in a trough or on a crest and bouncing around. The spin of the earth is a constant. So the change in height of sextant should be a straight line. When you plot those 10 shots on a piece of graph paper using height of sextant versus time on the two axes, then you should have a straight line. You do the plot, you take a straight edge, and you find the shot that is best for you to solve. You then go to the tables and solve the shot. If you don't have a true horizon, then you're going to have to set up an artificial horizon. You can buy artificial horizons, but they're very small, and I don't, I don't like them a whole lot. I just use a turkey basting pan from your local grocery store. I take the pan, fill it about two-thirds full of water, and then set it down on a flat surface. I then have these two pieces of plexiglass that I've taped together, and I set them in a triangle on top of the basting pan. It's really, really important that you don't have any wind or any vibration shaking the water. It's going to make your shots a lot easier to take. Once you've set up this little tent above the basting pan, you also have to put pieces along the end of the tent so you don't get any wind inside this little tent area at all. After you have this all set up, you're then ready to start taking shots again. You walk around behind the pan until you've found the spot where the reflection of the sun in the water is coming directly up into your eye. You'll find out where it is really quickly. Then at that point, you take your sextant and you adjust the filters on the sextant so you can see the sun and the image. When we're using an artificial horizon, it's important to remember that you may still have to have filters in for the horizon mirror because the image coming out of the artificial horizon is going to be just as strong as the image you're looking when you're looking directly at the sun. You then take your shot and you bring it down into the pan of water so the image of the sun is superimposed on top of the reflection from the pan. You want them to be absolutely directly on top of each other. After you've taken your shot and you're doing your corrections from height of sextant to height observed, because you weren't using either an upper or a lower limb, you were directly superimposing the images on top of each other, you will not use the altitude corrections for a sun. You'll use the altitude corrections for a star, and that'll give you the proper altitude corrections. So, that's how you take a sextant shot. You now have the angle of the sun to the horizon, and the exact time that angle was applicable. It is now time to convert that information to a line of position on a chart. Please take a look at our Celestial Navigation course at elearntosail.com. This is a nine-week, 27-hour course that will explain in detail what the Celestial Triangle is, how to solve it, and how to plot that information on a universal plotting sheet. Thanks. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration.